Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to create a walk cycle in Blender. I'm gonna give away this free sample project so that you can follow along. Now, walk cycles can be intimidating for beginners, but once you know the basic breakdown poses, it's actually pretty simple. So we're gonna go through all those poses in this video and create this animation by the end. This is actually an excerpt from a larger course I did where I walked through how to do other various animations such as this character, which I'll link in the description below. But for now, let's dive in and start animating. At this point, you should open the leg walk cycle start file so that you can follow along with this lesson. Now know that I've switched my keyboard shortcut from F2 to spacebar for search and all other keyboard shortcuts will show up down here. If you're struggling to follow along, just look down here and follow my button presses. Getting started here on our rig, what we're going to do is press the N key here to open the panel, come up here to item, and make sure that you are in pose mode. So just grab your object here and you can hold tab to switch to pose mode or you can switch up here. Now, if you recall earlier, I showed that with the auto keying, we could set active keying sets. So we're going to set up our rig to do that to make animation a little bit faster. So first, what we're going to do is grab the foot here, this foot IK bone. We're gonna come up to the location, right click and insert keyframes right click and insert keyframe. So we're going to do that on both the location and the rotation. We will do that for both feet. Next, we're going to grab this bone back here, which is the heel bone, and we're going to insert keyframes on the rotation. So I'm just right clicking and inserting keyframes there. Up here, we're going to grab the torso bone, which is the box. We're going to insert keyframes on the location of that. And then we are going to also insert keyframes on the rotation. Lastly, we will grab the hip and we are going to insert rotation keyframes. Now, if we come down here, we can turn on auto keying and I'm going to grab the only active keying set, make sure that is checked on. And then over here under keying, we're going to grab keying and we're going to turn it on to available. And now what that is going to do is only insert keyframes on the layers that we have already inserted keyframes. Now, if you didn't have your cursor set to one, you're going to have a random keyframe just floating out here. So what you can do to fix that is just press A to select everything. You'll see that it's all selected when it's blue, which means that we will have our keyframes down here. Click and drag over that and press G and just move that to the first frame. Now we're going to move to the first frame and begin inserting our poses. Now I find it easiest to split this window into two views here, and we're going to put one in the front view so I'm just gonna press one on the number pad there, and then I'm going to put this one in the side view. So you can press three and view it from this angle, or if you hit control three, you can view it from this angle, which is what I'm going to do. I don't need these windows open, so I'm just gonna press N and close those. And with that, we are ready to begin animating. Now, one thing I like to do to make this a little easier is I grab the annotate button here, and I'm just gonna click and drag here so that we have a line there. And now this is going to be our headline, which we can use to reference for the rest of the animation. So I'm gonna use this view over here just to grab my controls. I'm gonna grab the front foot there, and we're gonna start with the contact position. So we're gonna move this out a bit further there, and I'm gonna grab this foot, and we're going to move this foot back. Now we can grab the heel here, and just by pressing G, we can go ahead and move that. And I'm just gonna rotate that slightly so that it looks like our foot is up. And you can just continue to move this back a little bit to straighten out that leg. So you wanna make sure that the feet are staying flat on the ground, which in this case, we're just gonna use this grid line right here for the Y axis. Now let's grab this foot here. And for the contact, we actually want this foot to be angled upwards. So we will grab that and we will just move that hip upwards just like that. And you can adjust this foot a bit more if you want to try and straighten out the leg, but I'm going to leave this as our pose currently. Now let's go to the down pose. So you'll see here that I have marked everything for you. So I will move forward to frame four here and we will create the down pose. So first to do this, what we're going to do is grab our torso here. Now, typically when you're going on the headline and you're on your down pose, you're gonna be about half a head or a full head below. Now, in this case, this little hip right here kind of represents our head. So we can just move that down about half that distance. And you can see there, now our legs are already starting to bend. So let's make adjustments now. We'll grab this foot over here and we're going to move this back on the Y. And now the weight is kind of shifting into that leg. So we will grab this right here, the heel bone. And if you hit Alt R, that will reset 
the rotation there. And you can just make sure that that foot is just sitting flat right there. So that's kind of the pose we're looking for on that front leg. Now with this back leg here, we want the heel to be lifting a bit more as it's kind of starting to come off the ground. It can kind of keep its position here, but we will grab this leg here and I'm just gonna press G there and just rotate that so that knee is starting to come in a bit more. So you can see from this frame to this frame, how we are dropping down and shifting our weight. Now moving on to the pass position, we will scoot forward here. And now what we want to do is straighten our leg back up and put all the weight on it. So we are going to grab our torso and on the pass position, the torso head position should go up past the head. So we will move this up so that it moves past the head there. And now we can grab our foot here and we want this to be directly under and pulled back just slightly. So now all the weight is on that and that's so that this leg can pass through with no weight on it. So you can grab this and if you want, you can rotate this a tiny bit, but I'm going to leave my foot just completely flat there. Now we're going to grab this back foot here and we're going to lift it off the ground so that the knee bends. And this is the character carrying the foot through. So since they're not putting their weight on their toe, this toe should just be extended out. So I will grab the heel here and we will press Alt R. And what that's going to do is just reset the position of the foot. But we can grab the foot here and now we can hit R to rotate the foot bone, not the heel bone. And we can kind of extend this foot so it's pointing downwards. Now we have a cartoon character here with very long feet. So that means that we're going to kind of have to adjust a bit to get a proper pose. So we'll go and just pull that foot up around there. So this is the position you're looking for. The head is slightly above the headline. All the weight is on this leg right here and it is flat footed. And now that allows, because there's all the weight is on here, that gives their character the balance that then bring this foot and pass it across the leg. So this is kind of the positioning you're looking for in the pass through. Now let's move to the up position. So we can see how that is looking here from frame to frame, perfect. Then we will come to the up position here. And now with the up position, we'll be at our maximum height above the head here. So we will move the headline up even further. And, and we're going to take this front foot here and we're going to move this foot back so that it's extended. We're gonna grab that heel and we're going to rotate it this way so that it's kind of pushing up on the tippy toe. So what's essentially happening here is they're taking this leg and kicking back. And now all that weight has fallen into that toe so that they can then drag this foot forward. So we will bring this foot forward and we will rotate it forward. Because now what's happening is they are swinging this foot forward and they're bracing to put all their weight on this foot. So we'll grab this foot here, move it forward to around there. Now here I have accidentally put some keyframes on frame nine and some on 10. And this is a good example of how we can just fix things simply with this timeline. So what I'm going to do is press A to select all bones, click and drag, so I've only selected that frame, and I'm gonna press G and just move that forward one frame. And now everything is tidy on this frame. This is the frame that we are looking for for this pose. So now we have our contact pose, our down pose, our pass pose, and our up pose. As we scrub through here, you can see that we're starting to get a pretty natural walk cycle. Now what we're going to do is use a feature called Copy Pose Flip, and that will allow us to insert the rest of these keyframes pretty quickly. Let's take a look at how to use that. Now you see here we have the contact pose and I have all these labeled. So with the first frame selected here, we're going to press A to select all of our visible bones. We're going to go to pose, copy pose. Now we're going to go to the next contact frame, in which case we want to see this same exact frame, but flipped with the front and the back leg. Now if I come to this frame here, frame 13, which is also labeled contact, and I do pose, paste pose flipped, it will paste that exact pose flipped from the front and the back leg there. And you can see there, it's a little hard to tell in this gray mat mode. So now we can see that as we go through, we get a full walk. And we can actually do that for the rest of these frames. So we'll come here to the down pose, keep everything selected, do copy pose, come to the down pose, and do paste pose flip. Now, a trick you can do to make this even faster is you can go to pose, and you can do copy pose, and you can right click and add to quick favorites, and right click and add to quick favorites. Now, once you've done that, what you can do is just press Q in your window and all the things that you have added to your quick favorites will be there. So I'm gonna do copy pose there and bring this over to the pass position and paste pose flipped. Again, I will repeat that with the up pose and I'm going to do a copy pose there 
And then on this up pose, I'm going to do a paste pose flip. Now, if we come back to this contact frame, we need this to be at the end frame so that our lock cycle loops. So you can do copy pose, but rather than doing paste pose flipped, we can just do a normal paste pose. So we'll come back down here to the last frame, which is 25. And that's because we need to leave it at 24 so there's not a jump by having a double frame. And we will come here and do paste pose, which will mimic that first frame. Now, when we hit play, you can see that we are getting a basic walk cycle. Just by inserting those keyframes and using paste pose flip, you can see how quickly we move through this. Let's look at a couple ways we can quickly improve this. So let's add a little rotation in the hips. We will come up here to the 3D viewport and we're going to change this to graph editor. Now I have it set so that it only shows my selected items. So if you click this right here so that it is highlighted and grab your torso or your hips there, you'll see how it only shows the keyframes there. Now currently we don't really have any keyframes on the hip that we're actually using. If I select everything here with A and press period and zoom in, you can see it's a flat line because we didn't adjust the rotation at all. So let's switch to front view over here. And then what we're going to do is add some rotation to the hips. So up here, make sure you are set to local. And then if we grab the rotate here, we can see to rotate the hips to the left and the right, we need to rotate on the green here, which in Blender, the green means Y. So we'll be able to add a little bit of rotation to the hips by adding some animation to the Y. So let's make sure that we're only seeing the Y axis. We'll grab Y here and hit Shift H, and then we will only see the keyframes for that. Now we have a bunch of keyframes here that are kind of useless. So we can actually just start over by grabbing all the keyframes here to the right and hitting delete keyframes. Now we only have that first keyframes of the hip, which is set to the first frame. Now we're going to add a rotation keyframe to turn the hip towards whatever leg has the weight on it. So here in a contact pose, you can see that the weight is evenly distributed on both legs. So we're actually going to leave that hip center. And we can go to the next contact pose. And if we hit R click, that will just insert a keyframe there. And we can do that on the last one as well. Now, what we can do is look at our frames here. So if we come to this pass through pose here, we'll see that all of our weight is being put on one leg. So let's switch back to front view mode here. And what we're actually gonna do is grab this Y rotate here, and we're just going to rotate a bit so that all the hip is leaning in and putting its weight on one leg. And you can see there now that we have that keyframe. Now let's come to the other pass through and now all the weight is being put on this leg. So let's just rotate the hip that way. So it looks like we're shifting all the weight there. Now, if I zoom out and hit play here, you can see that we're getting a much more interesting walk cycle as the hip is bouncing back and forth. So that's kind of the basics of a general walk cycle. Now, one more thing that you can do to polish up your scene is if you come up here to the dope sheet editor and we select everything, We'll see that it's pretty clean here, but as we open it up, we just have lots of keyframes that we're not actually using. So what you can do is you can come up here to key and you can look for clean keyframes. Now this will clean all the keyframes and remove the ones that are unnecessary. And if we hit play here, it should still give us our same exact walk cycle. Perfect. And with that, we have a complete general walk cycle and we're ready to look at something more advanced. Now, one last thing you could do to polish up this walk cycle is you may notice that as you move forward here, the toe, because we have such large cartoon feet, is actually dipping through the ground. This is actually a pretty simple fix. If we open the end panel here and we grab our foot, we can right click here and insert keyframes on this toe control right here. And then as we move forward, we can rotate this toe control up so that it doesn't intercept the ground. And then we can just hit Alt R and move that keyframe forward. And you see now it doesn't pass through the ground. So you can do this on both sides and that'll just give you a slightly cleaner walk cycle as you can see there as it's not moving through the ground anymore. While we are still here in the graph editor, let's look at one more thing we can tweak with the torso here. So if we grab the torso here, we know that the majority of our motion is just on the up and down. So I'm going to grab the move controller here and with the local axis, we'll see that it is blue. So up and down on the torso, is the blue axis, which you see here is the Z location. Now, the only thing we're animating on this torso is the Z location. So we can actually just delete these other ones over here. And I'm just grabbing those and pressing X. And then I can grab everything here with A and press period on the numpad. And that'll zoom out so that we can see our view here. Now you can go ahead and do this on any bone and really start to tweak and polish the settings. 
For the sake of keeping it simple, we're just going to focus on the torso. So I'm going to grab this torso here, and we're going to look at all the keyframes we have here. So we can see here that this middle keyframe isn't of much use to us. It's just on the graph and it's not affecting anything. So I can go ahead and delete that keyframe and just create a slightly cleaner walk. You could also potentially do the same thing for these keyframes. And with that, you can see that we have less keyframes on our torso, but we still have the same motion. Now what we can do is we can scale these. So by scaling this easing here, we will make it so that it comes in faster and then remains slower. So you can see what that looks like here as it caches the animation here. You can see how it's hanging there a little bit more. You see how it's hanging up in the air a bit more. So that's an example of how you can adjust the easing to create a more kind of delightful or poppy animation. But we want to make sure that we do it on all of those so it kind of sits up high and low. So let's grab all of these keyframes here. We'll come up to the individual centers. And what that is going to do is scale them all by their individual centers rather than as a group. So now when I scale these, it will scale all of them individually. So with all of them selected and individual centers turned on, I will just hit the S key and just drag out so that they have a little bit more hang time there. And now if I go ahead and hit play here, you'll see that now we're getting a little bit more of kind of a cartoony up and down motion. And just like that, we have a fairly polished walk cycle and we're ready to learn 